Hello, good morning, ma'am. This is uh, Dr. Abdul Pasha, working as assistant professor from Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad, in the Department of Electrical and Electronics. So, this is about the course Power System Operation and Control. So, we have gone through the various cases in the control operation. And uh, now it is about uh, automatic generation control in a single area power system network. We already discussed some features regarding uh, automatic generation and its control operation in the power system network. So the continuation for this one is acting as uh, in the one area power system, that means single area power system network. So coming to the automatic generation control, so usually this may be treated as a crucial part of the power system network. That means what it is ready to expect or expected to do, what it does means automatic generation control automatically adjusting the generation to the restore the frequency levels. Means it will ready to make sure about the generation parameters and it will replace the frequency parameters to the nominal cases. So, which is given to the system load changes. When load changes are going to be takes place, then AGC is set right to the system parameter conditions. So, this can be achieved suitably with suitable control parameters or control variables. Control parameters or control variables. So, it also ensures that the line powers and uh, frequency are supposed to be within the prescribed limits. That means, with their allowed limits, they are going to be allowed. So, why it is so much important? What is the importance of AGC in the single area power system network means? So, AGC is very much important because of the increasing size. Increasing the size and also complexity of the network complexity of the interconnected power system network agc involves more but because power system network is tightly interconnected with so many components when there is a increase in the size of the power system network then there may be expectancy of distortions in the network this may be due to faults, interruptions, or manual operations, automatic shutdowns. So, there may be so many reasons. So, to avoid such kinds, we need to compensate it with the automatic generating control action. This can take over the whatever the system failures or disorders that can be supposed to be compensated suitably. So, because of that reason, AGC plays a key role in the power system network. So, as the size of the power system network is going to be increasing means what is happening? More number of uh, components or blocks are connected one each other. Number of blocks are connecting one each other. Then size of the power system network automatically increases. What happens due to this number of failures? or uh, shortages or disorders, this may take place. To avoid such kinds, we are going to connect one of the AGC at any means. This may ready to reduce the uh, system disorders or any malfunctionalities in the whole network of the power system case. So usually this is happening means because of the more number of the size of the components connected together to the power system. And also it may have the complexity of the network. When complexity of the network will follow, when the size of the network is more, when the size of the network is more, automatically complexity will also more. Why? Because size means number of blocks are going to be increases. So that replica as a complexity of the network. We need to search, we need to solve for each and every block, each and every component of the network. So, because of that reason, then the system handling capability will be reduces when it happens manually. This is the reason we will connect AGC to each and every section of the part 
for each every block of the case. How it is going to be works? How AGC going to be works for a single area power system network means usually single area power system network has a speed governor mechanism. We already discussed about the speed governor mechanism case. So a turbine generator and a primary and supplementary controllers are going to be interconnected together. How it is going to be functions means for a given particular single area power system network, it should be connected with various blocks. What are the blocks they are interconnected means? One is speed governor mechanism, another one is a turbine component, another one is a generator and it is followed by primary and supplementary controllers. So this follows the working operation of the uh, single area power system network when it is connected by AGC system. So, one generating unit is responsible for maintaining the desired frequency. Usually, we have number of sections in the power, power station or power plant. So, in any of them, one of the any one generating unit is going to be taking the responsibility for uh, keeping the desired frequency levels. We already learned from the LFC case, load frequency control. What we learned there, when you are going to maintain the frequency levels as constant, that means the system operations are going to be suitably with the needed results. This may be going to be expected with the LFC controllers cases. So here one question arises what it is means how it is affected by disturbances. I already suggested you here that means when the system is uh, more in size, the whole of the network is uh, with uh, larger in size, then what happens? It is uh, affected by more complexity of the network. That leads to the effect of the disturbances to the power system network. So, this is due to some more other reasons as sudden load changes. Why sudden load changes expected? The reason is that number of loads uh, may be connected at a time. Number of loads may be connected at a time to the grid and uh, it may be affected as one of the sudden changes sudden change in the utilization of the power sudden changes in the utilization of the power course so due to this what happens means which can cause the frequency to fluctuate for a long time so it should not be stoppable at a limiting constraint so this sudden load change why because nowadays all the loads are not operating on the same periodical aspect. New loads are interconnecting more. New loads are increasing day by day. Day by day, the consumption of power is increasing more and more. So we cannot expect that a single load cannot operate for throughout the day. So multiple loads, number of loads, multiple loads, they are interconnecting together and they are making the operation due to which the load demand when it is going to meet the requirement is going to be imbalanced. The imbalanced condition we are going to see when it is supposed to be reaching to the next level. So due to which we are going to see that effect of disturbances in the entire power system. So Due to which what is the resultant from this external distortions or disturbances means oscillations are produced in the system which may result as imbalance of the power. The power cannot meet the certain load required. Okay, so when the load requirement is X, we cannot reach this X level. We have the Y coefficient even though we cannot reach to the extent of X level. This is the amount of power that should needed to meet the load requirement. Amount of power that should be needed to meet the load requirement X. This is the load requirement. So to meet this load requirement, we should make sure about amount of power that should be needed. So to make all these things, this is for balancing of the generation with the demand and preservation of the line power. 
and frequency changes with the allowable limits are going to be accepted to the suitable ranges. So here the problem of the frequency deviation is that due to which when the changes in the load demand is a serious problem then when it is faced with that uh, complexity of that when it is interconnected by the power system network high quality of the power supply is required high quality of the power supply is required due to which of the modernization and automated industries because of these modernization and automated industries high quality of power supply is required why because all the loads nowadays are uh, based on electronics that means we can expect the systems with harmonic contents. So these loads will generate harmonics means what happens malfunctionality of the load cases may take place due to which the system is suffered from interruptions, load interruptions. So these load interruptions may cause us to the entire whole power system network. This may impact on the components of the various blocks, whichever it is connected to the power system network. So the components of the power system blocks are going to be affected more. So the mismatch that is happening in between the power generated and whatever the power consumed is occurred due to the changes in the load demand. That means the mismatch means imbalancing. Mismatch means here imbalancing in between the amount of power that is to be given or generated and the amount of power that should be utilized is uh, supposed to be happen due to the changes in the load demand. That's why what I am saying is that we cannot say that we cannot uh, making the constant load demand. We cannot making the constant load demand due to which we are uh, expecting the imbalance, imbalance or uh, mismatch, imbalance or mismatch that we are expecting in the power system. We cannot say that only that fixed amount of the demand is happened for throughout the day. And we cannot say that this cannot be continued for long more days. This cannot be fixed for long more days. So we should be in such a manner that we have to be give extra to the load requirement. We should be ready to fix to the load whatever that should be connecting additional to the grid, additional to the distribution network. So we should be ready with that power and we should be in such a way that we are ready to make the balancing of the power system. Then only we can meet the load requirement. So these are the auxiliary things we should be get ready with these components then only your system parameters can function suitably. So in the single area power system network the power quality will be good when the load demand occurs within the specified limit. This cannot be suitably achieved. Why? Because what I am telling is that the load requirement cannot be fixed here. When load requirement is 1 and your uh, whatever the power producing one, one to one it can be matched. But all the times this cannot be possible. Even though, even a short interval of time also this cannot be possible. Why? Because, because of the change in load demand. So, to maintain the good power quality. So, what a good power quality determines in the power system network means, which determines the quality of the power supply determines the quality of the power supply. What it is quality of power supply? Quality of power supply means quality of voltage, quality of current, distortional harmonic effects, distortional voltage fluctuations, distortional current fluctuations, avoiding short interruptions, all at a time cannot be positive. That's why we are connecting all these blocks with a device called AGC action. That is automatic generation control action. This should be contained with variable controllers. They can ready to act for the suitable uh, uh, whatever disorders that should be taken place in the power system. They will uh, immediately react to the uh, whatever the external distortion produced by the power system network when it is connected by various load changes. 
So that's the reason all the AGC blocks are connected with uh, control variables. They can make sure about the power system network operation suitable. So this is going to be happen in the power system network. We are dealing in the single area case. Whatever the area, multi area, single area, two area system. This is the parameter we need to achieve means we should uh, make our sure that we should ready to meet the load requirement with the balancing conditions with the quality of the power going to be transferred. So here the automatic generation control scheme of the power systems can be done to keep the reliability of the stable frequency. So what it means here AGC of the power system can only be happened with the reliable conditions and maintaining suitable frequency ranges. That means deviation in frequency of the single area and two area power system usually uh, dispersed in the earlier case from the schemes of Kothari and with the generation rate constraints and integral controllers. Then it gives a brief description about the controller cases uh, with the deviation in the frequency levels. So here uh, he is also introduced some uh, proportional integral controllers, PA controllers. They can uh, nullify the distortions produced from the system, particularly connected to the AGC of the two area and uh, in the reheat thermal power system. So and also Gauge introduced the AGC of the reheat thermal power system. What happens with this means by using this, we can connect artificial B colony algorithm. So due to which we can ready to set over to the load requirement, whatever the disorders that should be taken place. So in the recent years, what happens means one of the new latest algorithms have been adopted such that it should be named by bacteria foreing algorithm. In short form, we are saying that BFOA, bacteria foreing algorithm. So what happens with this? Uh, uh, algorithms like uh, genetic algorithm, GA, particle swam optimization, PSO, teaching learning based optimization techniques like TLBO, uh, for tuning of PID control parameters. These algorithms are most used. When tuning methods are there means algorithms are ready to function immediately for each and uh, purpose served by the complexity of the power system network conditions. So these of the algorithms are based on the tuning methods are going to give the suitable results. They can ready to filter the system disorders, which will make sure about the functioning of the power system network in a suitable conditions. And if you go with the modeling of the AGC for the single area power system network, we are going to design the single area power system network with AGC means it should be assumed with certain constraints or parameters. So major sources of the power generations are ready to meet the load demand and which are from hydro and thermal units. So here AGC strategies for several different power system structures are introduced like a single area, two area, multi area. So they have supposed to be introduced in the various power system aspects and which have been discussed by the researchers to develop the latest controller actions which are tied to the various optimization methods to reduce the uh, harmonic affected conditions. So SAPS that should be consisting of a speed governor mechanism, turbine and a generator case. These are supposed to be connected with a, one of the primary controllers as they are going to be supplementary controllers acting into the power system network. So in that SAPS systems, one generating unit is going to be present. So which is supposed to be mostly responsible to maintain the desired frequency levels. So how can we maintain this desired frequency levels by one of the introduction of LFC controllers. So LFC controllers are ready to act for these actions. So the power whole power systems can be classified into non reheat and a reheat type of the power system cases. What happens with this means the VD of SAPNS techniques with the components connected are going to be neutralized at the instant of a basic equilibrium condition. That means when you observe this uh, diagram, we are connecting supplementary controller with one of the control blocks provided here. 
This is the primary controller which is uh, connecting as uh, in between the joining points as a delta PC of S and 1 by R. So when it is connected to 1 by 1 plus ST, governor is suitable to connect to the turbine mechanism that has 1 by 1 plus STT. So when it is going to suppose it to be connected delta PG of S, delta PDF of S blocks are going to be connected to controller blocks. That means these blocks are connecting to the power system components as KPS by 1 plus STT. So this functionality as representing as delta F of S which makes sure about the power system operation to be operate in smooth conditions. These supplementary controllers are going to be interchanged with various controllers according to the disorders produced by the network. We can ready to change here these parameters but uh, this will act according to the governor mechanism, turbine mechanism in the whole power system network. This is made sure to the power system components and ready to act for the system auxiliaries. So when we consider AGC in single area power system network, in the power system network, governor is going to control the speed of the machine and senses the frequency bias. So what happens with this means the governor is ready to help to start the turbine with regulated speed. So here regulation of speed is achieved and also it ready to protect it from hazardous conditions. Any harmful conditions it can ready to act. So governor input is going to be changes in reference to the power and that may be taken place with the changes in compensated power case as delta PER that means that is as delta reference power minus delta PC and output is the corresponding valve setting that will be taken with the changes in the delta P value. So here the primary speed control is going to be taken by one of the equation as the delta PC as with 1 by R delta M. So what happens with this means we can achieve the primary speed control action suitably that is with the delta PC condition. So here frequency deviation is also expected that is in terms of delta F. So here turbine is ready to convert the energy of the steam or water into the mechanical power case. So the turbine is ready to drive the generator by the mechanical power and uh, different types of turbines are going to be utilized as a reheat turbine, hydraulic turbine and non-reheat turbine cases. So whatever the changes in valve settings as expected with the delta PV is acting as the input for the turbine case and output for the changes in the mechanical power output. That changes in mechanical power output is represented with the delta PM case. This is going to be taken as one of the referral input section. So here transfer function of non-reheat turbine is going to be considered. So this is expected to take as GT of S and a reheat turbine GTR of S is going to be represented with one of the expressions as GT of S equals to 1 by 1 plus S T. So this transfer function is made sure about for non-reheat turbine cases and when it is the transfer function it is represented with the GTR of S then 1 plus S K R T R by 1 plus S T T 1 plus S T R they are going to be expected with various uh, time ratios. So here GP of S is going to be considered with KPS by 1 plus S TPS parameter. So these auxiliary components are ready to act for the non-reheat turbines and uh, the reheat turbines which are going to make sure about the working of the power system network in a suitable manner. So here the generator and load transfer functions are going to be represented that is in, in the manner of GPS that we already seen. So effect of the reheat turbine on the single area power system gives the suitable dynamic response. So what happens with this means one of the portion BD, SA, RPS with the components connected they will ready to make sure about the response of the power system network. So how can we treat this model SAPS with the GRC means there are some different types of non-linearity blocks. They can ready to represent the power system network suitably. So in this model generation rate constraint GRC is considered and a BD of a turbine with the GRC is supposed to be represented. That means system performance degrades in the presence of GRC case. So what happens due to which means 
using a PI or PID controller, dynamic response is going to be improved automatically. So, wall of the generation is uh, 0.1 case in per unit megawatt per hour per minute, and uh, that is about plus or minus 0 0.0017 per unit value in megawatt hour per second is going to be considered. So, this is the block we are representing here. This is the controller section. This is going to be connected with uh, one of the controller blocks as it is treated with the primary and uh, this is the governor mechanism and this is the reheater section and this is the turbine section. So, all these blocks are interconnected to each other to one of the controllers delta PD of S, delta PG of S. So, what happens with this entire power system network with the control blocks KPS by 1 plus S TPS are connected to each other. So, due to which the functionality can automatically connected as one of the feedback path to the controller case. Due to which any one of the controllers, if you connect a P, PI, PID or connected with some other controllers, SM, FO, PID, whatever it may be the controllers, they are connecting to the blocks means if the problem is not rectified, any disorders are not going to be solved immediately. We can make changeover of the controller actions. It may be connected with the P at one instant. It may be connected with the PA another instant. It may be connected with the some other controller PID. Like that, we can change over with the different controllers at a different aspects, time aspects. This will give us to the suitable resultants of the power system network as the governor mechanism is connected and it is followed by reheater section, turbine section and uh, the whole of the power system is connected to the collecting end to the power system network case. Only the changeover is we can make through the controller case. This can ready to give the resultants at suitable cases. So, this is the representation of the turbine system with the GRC option. So, this will going to connect with the block and this GRC is going to ready to control the characteristic nature of the system. And the turbine is represented with 1 by STT case. This time functionality is taking as feedback path to the reference section. This is called the reference section. So, this reference section will be followed here. And uh, whenever any changes in the conditions of the power system network in terms of delta PG of S, the return path is taken to act immediately for the VD of the turbine system with the GRC case. So, here when we treat with the PI controller case, the same system, so it is connected with the error signal at a suitable set point, at suitable set point, the system is followed by one each of the block as KP and KI by S. This is connected again to the another controller section, which is followed by the plant of the power system network. The response is generated here will be collected suitably, that is as uh, output. And uh, here also same, the feedback path is providing to the input section as at the set point. The response is not ready to meet the load requirement. Then feedback is uh, connected to the reference section of the point. This will be actuated by the error signal. And this error signal is connecting to the one of the PI controller here. Instead of that, we can use a PID like that. So many controllers we can follow to run with the system configurations. So here controller design parameters with the use of PA and PA controllers are very often used in the industry. Nowadays, so many controllers are introduced in the power system network. Even though the PA and the PID is not ready to solve the disorders produced by the system considerations. So it can be compensated with suitable controllers according to their uh, noise levels, uh, harmonic controls, etc. So, so many we have disorders. According to the disorders, they are going to replace in the controllers. We cannot continue with the whole power system with these two controllers only. We need to interchange the controller actions according to the given generated disorder. So, here the proportional integral controller is ready to design for the combination of proportional and integral control actions. That means PI controller design has the proper combination of KP and KA parameters. So, that means a proportional constant, integral constant. They are ready to optimize using one of the GNA algorithm method. 
So what happens with this? It will minimize the forced oscillations and the steady state errors from the time response cases. This is now going to be operated suitably. So a proportional integral controller is ready to decrease the steady state error and the system stability that is going to be unaffected easily. So a BD of the proportional integral controller with the negative unity feedback that should be represented in a closed loop manner. So the control action is represented in a closed loop manner and the PI controller is also a three term controller. What happens with this means? The, it is the combination of the outputs of the proportional, integral and uh, derivative control actions due to which the system response may go to hikes. So PID controller has the advantage of both the PI and uh, PD action. So due to which it improves the stability of the control system. The response of the our uh, stability of the system may goes to high and the steady state errors also decreases. So where KP, KI, KD are the proportional constants, integral constants, derivative constants, then GPI of S as KP plus KI by S, then PID control action as KP plus KI by S plus KD of S. Why? Because here one more derivative constant is adding. Derivative constant adding in this power system method. Because of that, the system constraints will be followed. So here, BD or PID controller is connected in parallel from that. So that SMC with the controller is shown in the next case. This is representing the BD of the PID controller, followed by set point, error factors, uh, P, I, and D analysis. These blocks are interconnected to another reference section that is tied to the plant output. Again, here also same, the feedback path is provided for the suitable set point. This will generate the error signal and it will ready to act immediately. So according to the response generated, it will be estimated. The system will be estimated to the given time period. And if you consider the next case, this will represent the BD of SAPNS with the GRC case. So here also same, controller is connected. So one by R is the ratio connecting to the set point and it is followed by governor section and the GRC turbine levels are connected here one each other back to the whole power system network is connecting to each block as delta PC of S and delta PG of S, delta PD of S and delta F of S. These are the functionalities. The feedback path is connecting to the controller means the controller is ready to nullify the disorders produced by the system. So here most of the systems are connecting to the functionalities means as the governor connected to the speeding mechanism may expect variations in its uh, excitation levels. So due to which the GRC can uh, ready to suitably compensate for disorders produced by the entire power system. This diagram will represent VD of the SARPS with GRC as acting as controller. That means the referential sections will ready to meet the load requirements as the governor mechanism is found. The reheater section will be represented with 1 by 1, 1 plus SKR, TR by 1 plus STR. That uh, cross sectional views are going to be connected to the GRC section. These are interconnected to the turbine model due to which the whole power system network are represented with auxiliaries of delta PC of S, delta PG of S, delta PD of S, delta F of S. Here the uppermost layer is going to be treated to the controller action. This can generate suitable responses. This is the VD of SARC with the GRC and a So here in a single area system, there will not be any tie line schedule to be made usually. So that's uh, because of the function of the AGC is only to the bring to the frequency to the normal. So this will be achieved usually by using the supplementary loop which uses the integral controller to change the reference power setting values. So as to change the speed to the required level. So integral controller gain like K needs to be adjusted for satisfactory response. That means in terms of its overshoot, settling time, Rising times like that, we can expect so many time domain parameters like rise time, peak time, settling. 
So likewise, with various controllers connections, the single area power system network can suitably operate in the given AGC network. So although each generator will be having a separate speed governor, so all the generators in the control area are supposed to be replaced by single equivalent generators. That means ANFC for the area corresponds to this equivalent generator is going to be treated based on that uh, system parameters it is going to be function suitable. So these are one of the references uh, for you and uh, lecturing contents, some various uh, uh, online resources, we can make sure about single area power system with the various controllers. We can search with some other controllers that can ready to feed the system and they can ready to easily smoothen the system uh, response with uh, suitable ranges. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.